I've entitled this message this morning, In a Place Where I Should Not Be. In a Place Where I Should Not Be. When couples first learn that they are to become parents, they immediately begin the process of setting the course for their child's life. They begin to reconstruct their own lives so that the child may have a better life than they themselves. The goal for their child is to get the best education possible, graduate high school, college, get married, have their own children, and begin their own lives with Jesus at the center of their home. You see, it is our parents who are the ones who encourage us to be the best that we can be. Parents set the course for our lives. They, they sit down and they talk with each other and, and, and they discuss uh, the type of schools that we will attend and they discuss, uh, uh, they discuss the type of upbringing uh, they would have and they discuss who would be the disciplinarian in the home and they discuss all of these things and, and the, the, the parents are the ones who set the course for our lives. God is that type of a father. It is he who also has a plan over our lives. As a matter of fact, Jeremiah 29 and 11, God says that I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not evil to give you an expected end. God has a plan for our lives. I just want to stop by and tell you this morning that education for the child begins in the home. Education for the child begins in the home. When children are reared in the home, when they leave home, the, the society should see the reflection of the parents. Dr. Martin Luther King said it this way. He said that character plus, uh, plus integrity is the true goal of education. Character plus integrity is the true goal of, the, of education. You see, God's expected plan for our lives, God will allow us to see the end of our trouble, though it lasts long sometimes, it shall not last always. He allows us to see the expected end which we desire and hope for and are waiting for. He will give us the expectations of our, will not give us the expectations of our fears, but the expectations of our faith. The end that he has promised and is being worked out for us even now. In our, in our text this morning, the story of David and, and Bathsheba, for some, this is a story of judgment and condemnation. Others may see it as a story of grace, restoration, and hope. And for those who are willing to admit their sin and accept God's judgment, grace and restoration is both. For both of us who have, for those of us who have experienced moral failure, divorce, or other such life experiences, is it a message of hope, healing, and restoration that reminds us that God's agenda is not to crush sinners under his feet, but to heal them and restore their relationship with him. Now, David was a young man that was reared in a single parent home. The Bible tells us that he was, he was raised by his, his, his father, Jesse, and, and, and there were seven, uh, seven boys, David being the youngest. It's, it's interesting that the Bible uh, brought this out is because it, it, it tells me that the father is, 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 is more important or just as equally important in the home as the mother. You see, we have too many young men 
and too many of our children that are running around don't know how to be men in, in, in the families and don't know how to treat families is because the men are not in the home like they're supposed to be. Too many of our young men are hanging out on the street corners and, 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 and with their pants hanging down. And, and too many of our young men are hanging out on the street corners selling drugs and, and doing whatever they, they need to be because the father is not in the home. Too many of our young men are trying to be rap stars and, 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 and disrespecting our young women in, 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 in music because the father is not in the home. I stop by to tell the young women that if you're going to try to find your man, first of all, try to find the man that's going to be faithful to God. Number two, if you're looking for a good man, try to find you a good man that has strong moral values. There are four aspects to this text that I would like to look at this morning that will possibly uh, lead us sometimes to places that we should not be. First of all, there is the sin, which will examine how David and Bathsheba got into this mess in the first place. Uh, then there is the cover-up. It looks at the frantic efforts of David to hide his sin. Then there is the condemnation, a look at God's effort to straighten out the mess that David and Bathsheba got into. And then the restoration, which shows us God's grace and restoration for our lives. First of all, let's, 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 let's take a look, at, let's take a look at, at the sin. The text tells us that it was during the time of war, in the springtime, when David should have been at war. But the text says that David didn't, didn't go to war, but he sent Joab and the rest of the Israelites out the war to fight a battle that he himself should have been fighting. See, sometimes uh, the, Bible, the Bible tells us that, that, that the battles that we fight are not ours, they are God's. And sometimes God will have us in a place where we should be fighting a battle on this side, but because we think we know more, more, know more than God, we find ourselves fighting a battle on this side. We're not fighting the battle that God would have us to fight in, so in that we find ourselves in places that we should not be. It says that, it, it says that David uh, w w was sleeping and that, he, and that he rose from his bed and he walked on, on, on the king's palace, on the roof of the king's palace, which means that he, he, he was taking a nap and when he woke up, he decided that he wanted to go out on the patio and just sit out on the patio. And lo and behold, when he, when he stepped on the patio, what did he see? And, 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 and I, I can kind of understand, I can kind of understand David's plight, because if, if Bathsheba looked anything like my wife, I probably would have fell into the same trap that he fell into. David looked over on the, roof, on, on the rooftop, and he saw Bathsheba bathing, and, 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 and he, he decided that, that, that he was, wanted to find out who this woman was. You see, I just want to stop by and tell you this morning that sin does not always impregnate us. We sometimes impregnate sin. What, 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 what do I mean? See, sometimes, sometimes we can be, we can be on, our, on our journey and, and sin can just be, just be sitting there and it's not doing anything, it's just sitting there. And because it's sitting there and because of our own evil desires within our own hearts, we go to it and we pursue sin instead of sin pursuing us. And because of that, we find ourselves in places that we should not be. You see, at the very root of David's problem, we find that David wasn't where he wasn't, wasn't where he belonged. And the majority of the times when we, when we find ourselves in situations that we shouldn't be in, it's because we're not where we are supposed to be. Sometimes we're not where we're supposed to be emotionally, and we're not where we're supposed to be psychologically, and we're not where we're supposed to be physically, and we find ourselves in places where we should not be. David called unto Bathsheba, and she came into him. Now, some people may say that Bathsheba would, 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 should own up to some of the blame of this tragedy that took place because Bathsheba had a choice. Now, David was the king, and, and when the king summoned you, you're supposed to come to the king, and if you don't come to the king, you risk death. So Bathsheba knew that, and so when the king called on her, even though she was married, she still made a choice to go to the king. I know three young men who, who, who faced the same dilemma, and when the king told them to do something, even though they, had, they faced death, they still chose not to go to do what it is the king asked them to do. What I'm trying to tell you is that sin is a choice. 
And even, even though you, 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 you may, face, may, may face some trials and tribulations, you still have the responsibility of resisting and doing what it is that God asks us to do. And so David called unto Bathsheba, and he went in, and the text tells us that he, that he slept with Bathsheba. And when he slept with Bathsheba, she went back into her home, and David thought it was all over with. He felt like it was just going to be a little one-night affair, and, and it, it, everything was going to be over. But I stopped by to tell you that sometimes it's not just one-night affair. Sometimes it's a lifelong process when you're doing what God asked you not to do. So David sent to the king and told the king, she says, now, uh, king, uh, you know, a few months ago we, we had this little fling and, uh, and you know that my husband wasn't, wasn't here. He was out the war where you should have been. And uh, I just want to let you know that I'm pregnant. I'm with child. I remember an incident in my life one time before. I was dating a young lady, and, and uh, I shouldn't have been dating this young lady. As a matter of fact, uh, it was a young lady that my mother had warned me against, and uh, I decided that I wasn't going to listen to my mama because uh, this, this girl was, was pretty fine, and so I thought I knew everything. And uh, we were sitting and we were talking. And she said to me, she said, she asked me a question. She said, if I were to, if I were to get pregnant, what would you do? And I said to her, pregnant by who? I never saw her again. Because I believed that that young lady was with child, and she was trying to tell me that, was, that she was with child. And because we had done some things that we had, were not supposed to do, she fled. And so David, when he found out that she was pregnant, he began what I like to call the cover-up. He began, he wanted to try to, try to cover things up. Now, I, I, just, I just want you to know that just because you, 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 you cover something up does not mean you're not going to be found out. I used to start by to tell you this morning that you can't hide from God. God knows everything. And so, so David, what he decided to do, he decided to call Bathsheba's husband Uriah from, 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 from the battle. And, and, and if, you, if you notice in the text, David he, he, he called him in and he pretended like he wanted to know how the war was going. He asked him how Joab was doing. He asked him how the people were doing. So he made small talk with Uriah before he set him up. He was trying to set Uriah up. What he failed to realize is that, that Uriah was true and faithful to who he was. Sometimes, regardless of the circumstances and, 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 and what's going on in our lives, we have to remain true and faithful to who it is that God will have us to be. There are some people out there that don't have your best interests at heart. And some people out there that will set you up and that will, that will draw you into some things that you're not supposed to be into. Uriah was never supposed to be a part of this plan. But because he was Bathsheba's husband and because Bathsheba had, 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 had became pregnant by another man, David decided that he was going to cover up the sin. So he called Uriah in and he... he, 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 he brought Uriah in and he, 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 he sat him at the table and he fed him and he fed him wine and he got him drunk and he told him, he said, now, 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 when you go down, when you leave here, I need you to go down to your, to your house and, and spend some time with your wife. Because he knew the effects that alcohol has on the body. I'm trying to talk to the young people right now for a minute now. When you, when you get out there and, 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 and you and, and you get in school, and you, and you get in college, and, 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 and some of these colleges are only party colleges, and so there's going to be alcohol and all kinds of things out there, and that's, that, 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 that substance that you put into your body will have, will have a, a, a certain type of effect on you as a, as a young man and a young woman, and you might find yourself caught up in the situation, so be careful of what it is that you put into your body while you're out there in school. If, if you're not putting anything in your, in your mind that God wants in your mind, don't put anything that in your body that God doesn't want you to put into your body. 
you might find yourself in a place where you should not be. And so he sent Uriah down to, to his home to, 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 to spend some time with his wife. And, and because Uriah was faithful to who he was, Uriah decided that because my people are out there fighting for me, I am not going to go to my wife's house. I'm going to sleep here on the king's steps. Because how unfair would it be for me to enjoy the fruits of life when there's someone out there giving their life for me? And so Uriah, so Uriah decided that he wasn't going to go down, and, and David found out about it, and, and, and he wasn't really upset, but he didn't, he didn't realize what it was he would have to do. You see, one thing, one thing David didn't understand, is, and, and it's a rule to the streets, that once you tell one lie, you're always going to have to tell another lie to cover that lie. So the first thing we should learn, learn not to do is just don't lie in the beginning. I, I tell this story in, in Sabbath school sometimes that, 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 that my mother used to, uh, used to say to me all the time, she said, boy, how did you, how did you learn how to lie so good? And, and, and I, and I, and I, told, and I told, told the story that, that, that when, I, when, I first, when I first came to Christ and I was giving my life over to Christ, the hardest thing that I, had to, that, I, that, I, that I knew that I had to give up is that I wasn't going to be able to lie anymore. That was the hardest thing for me to give up and not being able to manipulate the circumstances to be able to get what I want. So I asked myself the question, how am I going to get what I want if I can't lie to get what I get? You tell one lie, you have to cover that lie up with another lie. And so what you find yourself doing, you find yourself remembering lie after lie after lie. And so David, in, in his attempt to try to cover up, try to cover up his sin, he sent Uriah into the battle, into a heated battle, in an attempt to kill him. And Uriah went to the battle, and they set him on the forefront. And to me, it's the same as if the devil will send us out there and send us out there and, and send temptation our way. And as soon as we get in the middle of that temptation, he'll take us out at the, at the very time, at the very moment, we're in the middle of our sins. And that's what, that's what David tried to do to Uriah. He tried to take him out and cover up his sin because he didn't want anybody to know. But what he failed to realize is that you can't hide from God. Sin does not affect only the one that committed the sin. It affects everyone that's around you. And so David sent Uriah into the battle. And Joab came back with the word that Uriah had been killed. And David, in his, in, 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 in his own thinking, he says to himself, it's over. Uriah came home and he, he got drunk and he slept with Bathsheba and everybody's going to believe that Bathsheba's child was Uriah's. Then comes the condemnation. David thought it was all over with. But then God sent Samuel. And Samuel told a parable about how there was a man in a kingdom that had enormous wealth. And there was a man in that same kingdom that only had a little bit. And that man with that enormous wealth went and took that from that man that had, had a little bit. And David became irate. And David said to himself, whoever this is, he should deserve death. And what David didn't realize is that he was pronouncing death on, him, on, him own, on his own self. So you see, sometimes when we, when we find ourselves in sin and we're doing what God uh, doesn't want us to do, we are pronouncing death on our own selves. And so... Samuel told the story, and David got out right. And, 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 and if you read the story of David, you find out that, that it, it took years for David to, for David to uh, 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 confess his sins. He, he felt like that he hadn't done anything wrong, and he, he went years and years and years. And then if you read through the book of Psalms, you get down to Psalms 51, and we find out that David realized that he was in a place that he should not be. And in Psalms 51, when he realized that he said this, he says, Lord, create in me 
a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. Every day we should say that prayer, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. You see, you see David found himself in the place that, 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 that David could not even rule his own family. See, sometimes when we, when we find ourselves in the sin and, 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 and doing things that we want to do, we don't even have any influence on our own, on our own children and our own families. We wonder sometimes why, why the children in society run, run so rampant right now because the parents don't have any influence on them because the children have seen the parents do so much, they don't respect the parents anymore. David's family had no respect for him anymore. He couldn't rule his children. He couldn't rule his family. And he found himself losing his influence. The influence that he did have, he was using it on the negative side, not on the positive side. His son assaulted one of his daughters. And another son went and killed that son because of that. And the son that killed that son turned his back on his father and tried to take his father's kingdom away from him. And so David had no control over his household. Don't find yourself in a position to where you have no control over your household. Another reason I believe we don't have any control over our household is because, is because we depend too much on, 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 on the cell phones and, 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 on, and on Facebook and Twitter and all, these, all of these different entities are raising our children in our society today. It's gotten to, it's gotten to the point to where we've even, allowed, we've even allowed the child protective services to come into our homes and tell us how to discipline our children. I think that uh, my mother didn't really, didn't really care about CPS when we were growing up. You could call CPS if you wanted to, but the question was, what are you going to do between the time you call them and the time they arrive? There were 10 of us in our home, and it was just my mother. And, and, when one, when, when we, and, and we, thought we, were, we thought we were smarter than our mother, and, 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 and so, and so we, we decided that if anybody did something, we weren't going to tell it on anybody. We weren't going to tell. And so my mom said, okay, you're not going to tell? Everybody lie down. And she'd walk around the house trying to look for the belts that we had already hid. And she would go to the lamp and cut the extension cord off of it. It's a wonder we ever, we ever had any kind of electricity in the house as many extension cords she cut. <laughs> but what happened with that, that, that made us who we are today. Because she understand that she understand the point of, of not sparing the rod and, and discipline her children. You could not tell my mother that she was not going to discipline her children. And if the extension cards didn't work, and we learn to expect, respect our parents. I don't know if y'all grew up in that in, in that kind of in that kind of home, where I, 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 don't, I, I don't know, but you know, I used to get a, I used to get a lot of exercise in my home because if she couldn't find anything, she she throw something at you. And if you did something and, and, and she didn't want to get you, you thought you were smart, she didn't want to get you right then, she waited until you went to sleep. Anybody ever got woke up with a whooping? And, I, I ain't gonna tell no lie. It was plenty of nights. I got I I, I went to bed and I thought I got away. When, and when I opened my eyes, all I could hear was whack, whack, whack. And so David had no had no control over his family. He lost his respect in the community. He lost his respect with his with, with his with, the, with his followers. 
and there was nothing that he could do to gain his respect back. But even after all of that comes the restoration. God says that I love you with an everlasting love. And even though there is discipline and even though there is chastisement and, 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 and I never understood it, I never understood it when, when my mother said that this is going to hurt you more than it hurts me. I asked myself the question, I'm the one laying down. But I understood how much it hurts the parents to have to chastise the children sometimes in a way that they really don't want to chastise their children. And so, and so when, when, the, when, when they say it's going to hurt me more than it hurts you, they really mean that it really hurts them more than it hurts the child. And so it hurts God when he has to, when he has to, has to allow the trials and the tribulations to come about. But he allowed that simply because it's better for us in the end. My wife is going through an, an ordeal uh, now on her job, and uh, I can tell that uh, she's really struggling with it because, uh, you know, <laughs> sometimes I, I don't know if she's listening or not, but sometimes I, I, I try to tell her, I say, you know, you just have to, you just have to just wait. God is allowing you to go through this for a reason. It's going to strengthen you in the end. And she says, okay, okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. And the next few minutes, she done put in 100 applications someplace else. <laughs> she, 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 don't want, she don't want to wait. She, 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 she's not understanding that God has her, there for, has her there for a specific reason. There's somebody there that she hasn't ministered to yet that needs to know about God. And she's not going to move until whoever it is she needs to minister to has heard. And then when that happens, God is going to move you out of the way. And I try to encourage her to let her know that God is never going to change your situation until you change your attitude. What is it that God would have you to do? And that's all God is asking us in this story is to just to change our attitude about the way we think. And so even after all of everything that David had done, God still wanted to restore David to the rightful place where he should have been. Because even in the midst of all of this, God said about David that this is a man after my own heart. There was something about David's character. There was something within David that God respected and God loved that he would call him a man after his own heart. Now, the truth be told this morning, and I'm closing, the truth be told this morning that many of us, if we're honest with ourselves, we are in a place right now where we should not be. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm in a place where I should not be. Look at your neighbor and ask and say, neighbor, where is it? Where are you where you should not be? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, today I find myself under the blood of Jesus. We should not be under the blood of Jesus, but because he loved us so much, right now today we find ourselves in a place where we should not be simply because of something someone did hundreds of years ago. But because of his great love for us, and because God was able to look down through time, even before, he, even before he, he, he started his creation process, he went into the secret chamber and he said, I need to have a plan in place so that if my child should stray away, in the end, they can find themselves covered by my blood. The blood of Jesus 
is the only thing that blinds God. The blood of Jesus is God's kryptonite. So there may be someone here this morning for the very first time and you have been going through life and you don't know why things are going the way they're going and you find yourself in circumstance after circumstance and situation after situation and you keep asking yourself the question, Lord, why me? And God is saying, why not you? Have you ever thought about why God allowed Job to be tested? If you read the story very carefully, Satan never asked God about Job. God volunteered Job. God asked him the question, where are you coming from? And the devil said, I'm coming from to and fro in the earth. And then God says, have you tried, considered my servant Job? I stopped by to tell you this morning that whenever you face severe trials and tribulations and whatever you're going through, if God has allowed you to go through, that means God is bragging on you because he knows you're able to accomplish that which has been set before you. And because of that, we find ourselves under the blood of Jesus this morning. So there may be someone here this morning who doesn't know Jesus, who does not know God, and you've been contemplating and contemplating a relationship with God, but things just don't seem to go your way. And while you're having trouble right now, and it seems like trouble is lasting a long time, just remember, like we said in the beginning, trouble does not last always. The Bible declares that weeping may endure. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy will come in the morning.